Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. The First Order is an interesting organization because they are essentially a more over-the-top caricature of the Empire. If Stormtrooper armor is an iPhone 3GS, then First Order armor is an iPhone 10. The Resurgent class Star Destroyer is just the larger and better designed Imperial class Star Destroyer, and of course, Star Killer Base is the Death Star but built on a tiny planet. Yet, despite all of these glaring similarities, including a Darth Vader wannabe with daddy issues, the citizens of the galaxy still didn't really understand what they were looking at. Empire 2.0. So what did the average citizen of the New Republic think about this second New Order? Well, that's what we'll be trying to find out today. Corellia is known for its spirited and somewhat hot-blooded and crude inhabitants. I often tend to compare the planet lovingly to New Jersey. Like the Garden State, Corellia is full of people with an attitude and also is equal parts industrial wasteland and temperate force. Corellia also happened to be one of the oldest planets in the galaxy, and it was also home to one of the oldest corporations in the galaxy, Corellian Engineering. CEC, as it was called, employed a great number of Corellians. Some of these employees were pro-First Order, while some were definitely not. We don't have a picture of Winsher Brat, but just by his name alone, we can assume that he probably looks like Matt Damon. Originally from Bella Vistal, a serene mountain valley village popular with tourists and religious cults, Winsher Brat wanted more than anything to shake off his humble past and make a name for himself. Of course, Brat's idea of making it was kinda meh. You see, all he wanted to do was to rise through the ranks of his job in the Carillion Engineering Corporation and perhaps have a nicer office. Before the First Order arrived, he was quite proud of his middle management job as a head clerk for the Carillion Engineering Corporation's Records Department, which sounds as boring and useless of a job as it actually was. Who knows, maybe the CEC had a deal with the government and had a job quota that it had to fill or something. Because I'm pretty sure there were droids and computers who could do Brat's job. Working at the CEC should be a really cool job. This shipyard was known for creating beauties like the YT-1300 light freighter and also the CR-90 blockade runner Corvette. After the rise of the New Order and end of the Galactic Republic, the CEC was nationalized by the Galactic Empire. And the workers suffered for it. Han Solo's dad actually used to build YT-1300s, but the job beat him down and eventually ended up killing him, leaving young Solo all by his lonesome. Krillin Engineering Corporation would once again become privatized after the Empire's fall, but now that the New Republic was gone, the First Order had taken over. And once again, Krillin Engineering Corporation was under occupation. A lot of Corellian engineers and mechanics, especially the ones who had been alive during the Empire, remembered just how terrible things could be when a military first authoritarian government takes over the factory you're working in. These hardworking men and women would be the first to suffer under First Order occupation. Everything they did became monitored, and whatever luxuries workers were allowed, like extended lunch breaks, bonuses, and overtime, quickly evaporated. Nava, a long-forgotten acquaintance of Winsher from Bella Vistal, was now working as a mechanic in the CEC, and she wasn't afraid of telling Winsher right to his face that she really hated being under First Order occupation. Winsher Brad, on the other hand, had benefited greatly when the First Order had arrived. His whole department was re-interviewed for their jobs, and many of the workers were cunt, but not Brad. The First Order recruit stated that he was exactly the type of worker the First Order was looking for. What that meant was that Brat had no spine, no morals, and more than willing to do whatever the First Order wanted him to do as long as they kept allowing him to rule over his little kingdom at the record office. Small goals for a small man. The Colossus was an old mobile refueling station, sort of like the massive super tankers plowing their way through the oceans of Earth. Except, the Colossus can fly. During the years leading up to the First Order invasion, the Colossus was stationed on the ocean planet of Castilian and under the command of ex-Imperial Captain Emmanuel Doza. On board the Colossus was your usual assortment of criminal scum, refugees, adventurers, and traitors. Castilian was well into the Outer Rim, close enough to the unknown region to occasionally encounter the First Order's forays into the galaxy, and definitely far enough from the core regions of the galaxy to constantly be harassed by pirates. The Colossus was protected by an elite squadron of pilots who also enjoyed racing each other for the amusement of all the inhabitants on the Colossus. In one of the major repair shops on the station, a girl named Tamara, or Tam, worked as a mechanic. 
Tam was a pilot originally from Kuat. She had lost her ship some time ago and now is trying to build herself another ride. Unlike many of the more free-spirited individuals living on the platform, Tamara viewed the First Order in a positive light. That was probably because of her upbringing on Kuat. Kuat was a relatively wealthy core world planet and home to perhaps the largest shipyard in the galaxy, Kuat Drive Yards. Owned by wealthy Kuwati families, the shipyard provided plenty of jobs and opportunities to the local inhabitants. And during Imperial rule, Kuwat Drive Yards was busy producing Imperial class Star Destroyers. The truth was no matter who was in charge of the galaxy, the core regions usually were always better off. Their economy and tax revenue were essential for any central government, and the inhabitants were generally left alone. Tamara's grandfather had worked in an imperial factory under the protection of the Empire, and her family probably benefited greatly from imperial rule. One of the first things that Mon Mothma did when the New Republic took over was demilitarize the New Republic Navy. This, of course, cut back a lot of Quat Drive Yard's orders. Unlike Corellia, which was mainly known for making smaller civilian or industrial ships, Quat's massive orbital shipyards were designed for making large military vessels. The Imperial contracts for Star Destroyers would have made a significant part of their overall business, but those were all gone now, thanks to the New Republic. Back to the Colossus. Pirates were one of the largest problems for the people living on the platform. Raids were increasing in number and strength, and the Colossus' defenses were having problems as well. It seems like someone has sabotaged the defense turrets. At the same time, a First Order emissary arrives on the Colossus and offers military aid and defense against the pirates. Well, most people can see right through this ruse. Tam, who by the way was a kind-hearted and moral person for the most part, was glad to see that the First Order was coming to protect them and take over security. She was later shocked to find out that her own boss and good friend Kasuto Shiono were helping the Resistance, a terrorist organization. Tam was ultimately persuaded by the First Order Security Bureau agent on board to join the First Order and to help them hunt down her former co-workers and friends. We're not sure how long Tam will be able to last in the First Order, but the point is that a lot of people thought the same way as she did. They saw the First Order as a second coming of the Empire, an organization that will bring back order to the galaxy, something that the New Republic clearly has failed to do. Akiba was another planet in the Outer Rim. It was hot and humid and otherwise unnoteworthy. Except for the fact that shortly after the Battle of Endor, several of the most powerful Imperial leaders left in the Empire gathered on Akiva to discuss who would take over the Emperor's role. This would go pretty poorly for the Empire because someone had notified the New Republic about this meeting, and by someone I mean Gallius Rax, who was kind of like Emperor Palpatine's protege and in charge of his very evil contingency plan. Akiva would be amongst the first planets in the Outer Rim to join the New Republic, but interestingly enough, it was also amongst the first planets to join the First Order. Apparently, the locals were really fed up by the New Republic and its inability to keep simple promises like keeping their planet safe from raiders and bandits. Another interesting thing about Akiva is that Wedge Antilles and his wife, Nora Wexley, also lived on this planet. They had retired after the Empire had been defeated, and now we're trying to find some peace and quiet. They got in about two decades of rest time, but then were called upon once again by Princess Leia. This time she needed their help fighting against the First Order on behalf of the very depleted Resistance. Unfortunately, Wenge and Nora's neighbors really liked the First Order and didn't like them, so they called the security forces to come arrest them, but luckily Wedge and Nora got away. Whether you're Corrin or Mon Cala, it doesn't really matter much to the Empire because you're all just alien scum to them. And the First Order looked at the fish and squid people of Mon Cala in the very same light. And so the planet of Mon Cala finds themselves in a very familiar situation. Princess Leia had once called upon the Mon Cala to provide the Rebellion with some naval ships so that they could actually take the fight to the Empire. And now she was back with a much smaller Rebellion, I mean Resistance, and they were even more desperate to find some sort of help. Corrin leader Nosuri, who had at one time tried to overthrow the Mon Cala King with the help of the Separatists, had a very negative view of the Resistance. Like most people on his planet, he believed that they could only bring death and destruction to the world. And according to galactic history, I'd say he kind of has a point. After Admiral Radis escaped with the first wave of ships during the Galactic Civil War, Mon Cala was punished. After Captain Akbar and the Mercantile Fleet escaped later on, Mon Cala was again punished. And now you had the First Order, who just literally blew up an entire system and has shown that they were willing to carry out devastating retaliatory attacks against anyone who harbored the Resistance were on their doorstep. No one really wanted to stick their head out and help Leia one more time. 
It seems like the only person who actually wanted to help Leia fight the First Order was Gal Akbar's son, Aftab Akbar, a naive idealist. But ultimately, it didn't matter what the locals did because the First Order showed up again and Mon Cala once again would be punished. So we're starting to get a better picture of how civilians were reacting to the First Order invasion of the galaxy. Unlike the Empire, which basically ruled the galaxy for two decades, most people were really surprised and stunned by the First Order's appearance. Some people didn't even know that they existed in the first place. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.